back to our series called Paige Turner. This entire series is about the awesome stories that we were told given by God that just really makes us want to turn to the next page and I'm so grateful for these stories. So as you might know, Jesus also loved to tell a lot of stories and these stories we would call them parables. They are stories about everything that the people went through, everything that Jesus might have gone through, or even just stuff that he was trying to give the people a lesson for. He was trying to teach them through these different stories. Eventually, after Jesus went up to heaven, 
he gave all of these stories to his disciples and they actually wrote all of them down in four books in the New Testament and we call these the Gospels which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The greatest story that we have of all is the Bible itself. God gave us the Bible so that we could read all of these things and read about how evil came into our world and how he persevered and pushed through and how he was so powerful and overcame it all. So we're actually going to talk about all of that a little bit later in today's lesson, but first I want to get into the big idea for today. Are you ready? You're going to say, turn that page on three. Ready? One, two, three. Awesome job. Now let's read it together. It says, God is more powerful than evil. How true is that statement? He is more powerful than evil. So a lot of the times in the stories that we read, there's sometimes a bad guy, right? And just to give you a little bit of a forewarning, the stuff that we're gonna be learning today is a little bit scary, but it's okay because we always know that the bad guy never wins and God always prevails. He always wins against evil and that's what we're going to be learning about today so I am very excited are you ready to get into it let's go well guys it's time for our next Bible story and I think oh it's Miss Amy Collin let's let's let her in here we go hey Miss Amy well, I'm glad you're back again. Last week's Bible story was really awesome. That was really great. I'm glad you were able to bring that to us. But I know we have another Bible story today that's a little unique, right? Yes, this is not one we tell a lot um, because it kind of starts out kind of sad and a little freaky, mm. but it has a good ending. Yeah, it does have, and I, I think it has a great demonstration of God's power over evil. Is that correct? Absolutely. All and right. That is what we're talking about today is how much more powerful God is than evil. Cool. I'm excited to get into it. I hope you guys are too. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Jesus took Peter, James, and John to the top of a mountain to pray. While they were there, Jesus' appearance was transformed into a blinding light, and he spoke to Elijah and Moses. Peter, James, and John experienced the presence of God in a more powerful way than they had ever known it before. They spent the night on the mountain. And when they came down the next morning, they immediately encountered a large crowd full of people who were waiting for Jesus. A man yelled over the noise of the crowd, Teacher, please, please look at my son. He is my only child. He is often seized by an evil spirit. He begins screaming and shakes all over and he foams at the mouth like a wild creature. It hardly ever leaves him alone. I asked your disciples to deliver him, and they tried, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said, You unbelieving generation, how many times do I have to go over these things? Bring your son to me. As the boy was coming to Jesus, the demon slammed him to the ground and threw him into convulsions. Jesus stepped in and ordered the evil spirit to go. Then the boy lay on the ground so still that the people in the crowd began to murmur that he was dead. But Jesus took the boy by the hand, helped him to his feet, and handed him back to his father. Everyone in the crowd looked on in wonder. They were all amazed at the greatness of God. Later when they were alone, the disciples asked Jesus why they hadn't been able to cast out the evil spirit. Jesus answered, it can only come out if you have been praying and fasting. So as you can see, I have a pretty awesome scale here. A scale helps you figure out things that are equal. So I have a paper clip here and we're gonna find out how much this paper clip weighs using weights. So I'm gonna add this weight. Oh, it didn't do anything. Oh, it did a little bit. Okay, let's add this one. Didn't 
make it even. Let's add one more. <gasps> Here it is. It's equals. It takes eight weeks to make the paper clip even. That's so cool. So I'm going to turn it around. Ta-da. So some people might think God and Satan are equal, just like the scale. So what people see in the world today is they see a lot of bad things happening and hurting people. But they think that's okay because they see beautiful and helpful things happening in the world. And they think just because bad things are happening and good things are going to come right after it, they think it's equal. But I'm here to tell you that that is not true. They are not equal. So Satan started off as a beautiful angel. And he ended up doing terrible things and ended up turning away from God because he wanted to be just like God. And that's not possible because there only can be one God and he is way more powerful than Satan. More powerful that he crushes <laughs> the plans that Satan has for him. Just like this. So, God will always be more powerful than Satan and they are not equal at all. So, let's go to Miss Patty and see what she has to say. Okay, so that brings us to a really hard question. If God is bigger than evil, then why doesn't it look like that in our world? I mean, that's a really good question, isn't it? People just seem to want to do what they want to do, and they don't want to listen to God. And honestly, a lot of people do hurt a lot of other people. And that's just wrong. I mean, let's think about Adam and Eve, and when they were in the garden, they had an opportunity to either choose God's way or to choose their own way. And we know that they chose their own thing. And by doing that, evil came into this world. It affected them, it affected their relationship, and it's affecting our world to this day. But don't be worried about that because God, who is inside of you, is greater than the devil. And he wants you to take a stand against evil. So let's look at a scripture in Romans chapter 12, verse 21. I'm going to read that for you. And it says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So that reminds me of last week's lesson and when we talked about temptation. God wants you to be a warrior of good and to stand against temptation. And let's think about what Jesus said in the prayer that he was teaching his disciples. One part of that prayer says, and deliver us from the evil one. God wants you to pray that you would be delivered from the devil's schemes, from his tactics, from the temptations. He's asking you to pray for him to help you to get through that. And how wonderful would it be if you were to pray that not only for yourself, but for other people. I mean, God wants you to pray for your family, for your friends, for other nations. I mean, let's think about that. Today is National BGMC Sunday, and we have missionaries that are all around the world that are telling people about God. How wonderful would it be if you and I were to pray for their safety, to pray for God to give them a boldness and opportunities to share the love of God with other people who don't know him. And if we were to pray for those other people, that they would have opportunities to know God and to be um, shown his ways. That God would intervene in their lives and keep them safe from the evil one and to keep them safe from his schemes. I mean, it'd be really great if you and I could be those prayer warriors. So let's look at another scripture that I want us to go over. And that is Ephesians 6, 11 through 13. And this one says... Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. God calls us to be warriors against evil. Some of the ways that we can do that is to take a stand for what is true, to take a stand for what is good, to pray, and to give to others. 
There have been a lot of great fiction books about life under the ocean. I think about 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Maybe a, oh, a, herm, a Home for a Hermit Crab. Yeah, these are all great books. But what about non-fiction books? Maybe you read a book or saw a book at your school or library about uh, under the ocean life, right? Animals under the ocean. So speaking of this, I have a picture I want to show you guys. So this is an animal you've probably seen before. Yes, it is a great white shark. Yes, a great white shark, a powerful animal, very cool. So, some facts about a great white shark. They can be about 20 feet long. I know, right? 20 feet long, that's huge. They can weigh um, up to 4,000 pounds. That's really heavy. They can also swim at about a speed of up to 15 miles an hour. And they can jump out of the water about 10 feet. That's pretty power, pretty amazing. But... One thing that's pretty weird about them is that they don't have any eyelids. Like, they can't blink like you and me, so their eyes are just always open. That's pretty creepy. But it's pretty cool. So, uh, I have one, let's look at this picture again. And I want you to tell me, what would you say is the most powerful thing in this picture that you see? So, we've been talking about the shark and all the amazing facts about it and how strong it is. But if you guess the shark, that is the wrong answer. The answer is actually the ocean. You probably, maybe you were thinking about that, maybe you weren't. Yes, the ocean. So think about it. The ocean is far more um, gigantic than the shark. It has so much more power over the shark. Think about how dependent the shark is on the ocean. One, it needs the water in order to, to live and to breathe. But think about the, uh, the temperature of the water. If it's too cold or too hot, well, the shark can't really survive, right? Depending on what a shark is. If the, the current is too strong, it's going to push and move the shark around. And it might even uh, make the shark's food unavailable, depending on how strong the current is, if the shark's hunting in a certain area. So the shark is completely um, subject to the will of the ocean. So I want to look up a scripture verse that will help this ocean be a little more applicable to our lives. So this is from John chapter 16, verse 33. So it says, I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. When it says me, it's talking about Jesus here. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. This is Jesus speaking to his uh, disciples here. He's saying, in this world, on the earth, thing, difficult things will happen to us. We'll have troubles. There'll be people who don't like us. All these things. But we can have peace knowing that God and Jesus has overcome the world. And he's given us the ability to do the same thing. So Jesus, the Son of God, we know he came to this earth and he lived a life just like the rest of us. You know, he grew up as a kid and he um, was a teenager at one point and all these things. And he uh, was up to the age of uh, about 33. And he lived a life as a human. So he went through all the, a lot of difficulties that we went through, right? So he would get hungry and all these things. But the scripture verse is saying that Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, he overcame all these things. He overcame temptation from sin, from the devil. And he overpowered sin and temptation. And because of that, we can have peace and overcome these things as well. So in the same way that the ocean um, is overpowered, the shark, and the shark is not even on the same playing field as the ocean, in the same way, um, the devil and evil in this world, while sometimes it can seem strong and powerful compared to God, compared to Jesus, it is nothing compared to to it. God is so much more powerful than evil, so much more powerful than Satan, that we can overcome um, any temptation that comes our way when we put our trust in him. So when you look at the things around you, the things in your world that seem bad or awful or hard or difficult, you can always remember and ask Jesus to help you in the situation because he's more powerful than anything. So I want to pray right now and pray that one, that uh, God would come into our hearts. Obviously, Jesus can't help us in these situations if we didn't give our lives to him, right? Because when we're being obedient and serving God and he's our, the Lord of our lives, then we have power of the situation. He empowers us through his grace, through the Holy Spirit to overcome just like Jesus overcame. And then I want to pray that for those who do know Jesus, those of us who are followers of God, 
that God would continue to give us his strength and not to make us be afraid or to be fearful, but to have courage in every situation to overcome sin and temptation. So let's pray right now. God, we thank you so much, Lord. We thank you first and foremost for sending your son into the earth to uh, be the ultimate example and to be the um, ultimate example of a servant who is completely obedient to God, who overcame uh, sin and temptation, who overcame evil, who has power over evil. And God, um, we thank you so much for uh, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, which just uh, destroyed the power of sin, destroyed the power of evil over our lives, so that now we can overcome uh, all of these things. When bad things happen to us, God, we can still have joy. When temptations come our way, we can say no to things um, that are not from you, that are not good. And God, I pray that you would fill uh, the people watching with your power and with your Holy Spirit to overcome these things and to stand strong, to stand firm, to be a great example of what it means to follow Jesus in everything. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So before we go, I want to read one more scripture verse, guys, one more scripture verse for you that uh, just has some cool things to think about that kind of just encourage you. So this is from Psalm chapter 27, verse 1 through 6. Here we go. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble, meaning like shake in fear? When evil, um, when evil people came to devour me, when my enemies and foes attacked me, they, would, they will stumble and fall. Though the mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I'm attacked, I will remain confident. For he will conceal me there when, um, when trouble comes. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to the Page Turner Library. I'm your librarian, Bonobus Octavius Otto Kingsman. Uh, you can call me Mr. Book. I wanted to remind you that it's very important to be quiet when you are in the library. Now, it's okay, of course, to let out a big laugh <laughs> if you are reading a particularly funny book. But it is also important to remain quiet because we want to be respectful of those who are reading. It's just the kind thing to do. Well, I'm going to continue to help you to learn our memory verse, which is from uh, 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Now, I'm going to teach you how to do it with actions so that when you say the memory verse when you're in the library, you won't have to actually talk. Uh, so um, here's the actions that I'm going to use. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. And I'm stamping out the evil one there at the end there, in case you were wondering what that stamp was. So now let's try it without talking and just mouthing the words. Hmm? Did you get that? Maybe we'll try it one more time. Well, that's great. If you did it, congratulations. Now you can see the memory verse while you're in the library, or if you uh, don't want to wake up your cat, or if you have a sore throat. <laughs> so congratulations again. And uh, please uh, join us next week in the Page Turner Library. So long for now. Okay, and that is the end of our chapter today. That was such a good story. And as you can see, I was very much rooting for the good guys to win. So, if you kind of like how there's kind of spoilers in a story, you probably liked it for today and you're probably really happy. But just because there was maybe some spoilers about how God always wins, that doesn't mean that the next chapters aren't going to be so super exciting because they're going to be so good and they're going to be real page turners. So don't forget to come back next week 
and on Wednesday to see what happens next. And don't forget to like and subscribe. We will see you then.